The next video in my clinical scale series is going to be on lights criteria. In my opinion, lights criteria is actually the easiest clinical scale that you need to know for USMLE, COMLEX, shelf exams, and rotations. But pleural effusions are conceptually a lot more difficult to understand than the topics that the other clinical scales test on. And so for that reason, my goal in this video is not just to teach you lights criteria, but to also help your brain make sense of the difference between an exudative and transudative pleural effusion. So in short, a, the lights criteria is used to identify an exudative pleural effusion. When we look at pleural effusions, we categorize them as either exudative or transudative. And I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but if any of the lights criteria are true, you have an exudative pleural effusion. For the sake of simplicity, I want you to think of exudative as extra stuff, right? Exudative equals extra. If a pleural effusion is exudative, there's extra stuff in it. So exudative pleural effusions are caused by states of increased capillary permeability. Some examples of disease states that cause increased capillary permeability include any type of inflammation, pneumonia, cancer, TB, or pulmonary emboli. So exudative equals extra stuff in the pleural effusion. On the other hand, transudative pleural effusions are caused by states of fluid overload due to either increased capillary pressure or decreased oncotic pressure. And some disease states that cause transudative pleural effusions are heart failure, cirrhosis, and nephrotic syndrome. So for the sake of simplicity, and I'm going to repeat myself because it's very important, exudative equals extra stuff. Transudative equals fluid overload. If you can keep that simple in your brain, then you'll be able to answer most of your test questions on pleural effusions. But now let's get into the actual criteria. So when it comes to lights criteria, there are three criteria. The first is that the ratio of pleural protein to serum protein is greater than 0.5. The second is that the ratio of pleural LDH to serum LDH is greater than 0.6. And third, the pleural LDH is greater than two thirds the upper limit of normal of specifically the serum LDH. Now, if this seems overwhelming and random and lots of things and ratios and numbers, I'm, I wanna simplify this. So again, lights criteria. If any one of these three are positive, you have an exudative pleural effusion, which is to say that if you have any one of these three criteria positive, there's extra stuff due to increased capillary permeability. So under what circumstances would you expect to see more stuff in a pleural effusion? Well, if we look at these criteria, if the pleural protein is more than the serum protein, right? If the numerator is higher than the denominator, that means there's more protein in the pleura than protein in the serum. And how do you get more protein in the pleura? Well, you get more protein in the pleura when you have inflammation and cells breaking. So in any inflammatory process, in any cancerous process, you have cells breaking open, protein being released, that causes more protein in the pleura than there is protein in the serum. And that's why for Light's criteria number one, that ratio would be greater than 0.5 because again, the numerator would be higher than the denominator. There'd be more stuff, in this case protein, in the pleura than in the serum. The same is true of the second and third criteria. So if we look at those criteria, they would be positive in states where LDH is higher in the pleura than in the serum. LDH is an enzyme that leaks out of cells when cells break. And under what conditions do cells break? Well, cells break open in states of inflammation, in states of cancer, tuberculosis, pulmonary emboli. So when cells are breaking open and releasing LDH, we have an increase of LDH in the pleura more than 
an increase in LDH in the serum. And when that happens, when the numerator, in this case plura, is higher than the denominator, in this case serum, that ratio will be greater than 0.6 or greater than two-thirds the upper limit of normal of the serum LDH. So again, in an effort to help you simplify this and understand conceptually the difference between exudate and transudate, LDH leaks and protein permeates. Normally, LDH is tightly compacted into cells and protein does not freely permeate across barriers. But when cells break and you have exudative pleural effusions or disease processes that cause exudative pleural effusions, LDH leaks, protein permeates. So again, I already alluded to this, but if any one of these three lights criteria are positive, you have an exudative pleural effusion. So on USMLE and Comlex, if you have high pleural protein, high pleural LDH, chances are you're looking at an exudative pleural effusion. The specific criteria are shown here, and these are much more useful on step two, level two, shelves, and rotations. But this can show up on step one, and certainly the difference between exudative and transudative shows up all the time.